African heads of state and government met in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia on 1st July 2013 to decide on innovative and actionable measures to put an end to hunger in Africa. The high-level meeting of African and international leaders on a renewed partnership for a unified approach to end hunger in Africa by 2025 within the CADEP framework took place at the initiative of the African Union, FAO, and the Lula Institute, along with broad non-state actors. Following the unanimous adoption of the Declaration to End Hunger in Africa by 2025, the African Union has also declared 2014 as the Year of Agriculture and Food Security. In recognition of the role that agriculture as a whole and family production in particular plays in food security, 2014 has also been declared by the United Nations General Assembly as the International Year of Family Farming. If you say that fighting hunger is a priority for you, you cannot keep allocating 3 or 4 percent of the total budget to agriculture. If it is a priority, I think the minimum level that was requested at Maputo Summit was 10 percent of the budget to be allocated to the investment in agriculture. Ten years after, we have only 10 countries out of 54 that are allocating this level of budget allocation to agriculture. 10% or more. I may, must say that uh, Ethiopia in this is doing very well. Ethiopia is far beyond 10%. The food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, in collaboration with federal and regional governments and development partners, are supporting the government of Ethiopia to achieve its national development plans through the implementation of the Country Programming Framework, the CPF. In 2013 alone, FAO has mobilized more than $15 million for projects aimed at ending hunger and building resilience against shocks and crises. Hassan David has lost half of his cattle during the 2007-2008 drought that hit more than 5 million dryland communities and pastoralists of the country. He has no option than to wait for emergency food aid from government and aid agencies. Mr. Hassan is now a member of Eneb Animal Feed Producers Cooperative, established in 2008 by FAO through the financial support of the Norwegian government. Eneb has now 14 members, and its members are working for more than eight hours every day to change their lives and end the plight of drought, famine and hunger, and to ensure food security at household levels. Eneb Cooperative is now one of the very few multi-nutrient block producers in the country. They have produced thousands of multinutrient blocks and have accumulated more than $100,000. Moreover, it has saved the lives of thousands of cattle population in the pastoral regions of Ethiopia, in addition to the asset it has accumulated. <laughs> All of them are pastoralists, 
uh, as you know this uh, in this area you know drought is frequent uh, there is uh, there were shortage of you know because of frequent droughts uh, there were shortage of pasture and uh, you know water for their livestock so uh, especially uh, you know some six seven years ago uh, there were very high you know very serious drought in this area so because of this uh, uh, the pastoralists lost you know their livelihood and uh, uh, totally dependent on relief aid so based on the request from the Warada, the regional and the Kabali administration, the local administration. Uh, FAO supported these uh, cooperative members uh, to produce multi-nutrient blocks. And now uh, uh, they are uh, producing uh, hundreds of thousands of multi-nutrient blocks for different regions in the country. Uh, from our experience, you know, so far, they distributed, you know, about 50,000 MNBs for Oromia region drought during 2011 and 2012. And uh, they also provided about uh, uh, 20,000 MNBs for Tigray region drought. Uh, they also transported some 25,000 MNBs for Amhara region, uh, uh, were thus affected by drought. Uh, in Afar region, they, they provided so far, you know, they produced more than uh, 200,000 MNBs. So now they established well, they are supporting their families. So they ensured, you know, food security at, at house level. Ethiopia has Africa's largest livestock population. Over 60% of its land area is arid or semi arid lowland dominated by the livestock economy. For centuries, Ethiopian pastoralists and dryland communities have been adapting their local strategies to be food secure and resilient to various forms of shocks and changes. These strategies are currently challenged due to emerging changes such as climate change, increasing population, and unstable local and international markets poor services and weak implementation capacity. These problems, coupled with challenging environments, poor education and high competition of scarce resources, are increasing the vulnerability of pastoralists to existing and emerging changes. Hence, creating sustainable livelihoods and improved living conditions, reducing vulnerability to disasters, such as drought and ending hunger from the country and becoming a middle-income country by 2025 are the key focus of the government of Ethiopia. FAO is also assisting the government to achieve its goal of ending hunger and ensuring food security at all levels. Because of this uh, change in the rainfall, maybe we need now to look for seeds to look for varieties that are better adapted to the, the situation in uh, the arid and semi-arid area. These are just examples to tell you that the problem is now well understood. We are trying to address it through uh, these different resilient, resilience programs. This is not only about FAO programs, it is also about uh, the uh, the, the full range of players. Before the construction of this pond, pastoralists like Fatuma have to travel for more than eight hours to get water for their livestock and for household consumption. In the middle of this arid desert, FAO and Afar Pastoral Agriculture Development Bureau have constructed this pond which has helped to save thousands of cattle and human population. Among many others, FAO is also supporting the government of Ethiopia to improve agriculture, crop and livestock production, productivity and competitiveness. It is also enhancing sustainable land and integrated watershed management and smallholder farmers' adaptation to climate change. 
Through the support of Japanese government, for example, FAO project in Afar region has also supported pastoral women to engage in dairy product processing and marketing. Accordingly, cooperative members have been trained in milk processing and handling and constructing of milk retail shop at Asayita town. Amistuzon Salasa Hulet Uradano Kilwialo, Kazihansar, Basalasa Hulet Morada, and Sat Batale Hikiminana, Hikimina Magalga Masariauch, Kitivat Kamakrabantar, Batale Kin Sat Hautile, but Am Kin Sat and Agasa Fisrano Abrani Sarani Adeno. Ya in Sat Gataizo, Hikimina Masat Vicha Sayon, Arbito Adruno in Sayalo. Little Chim de Mobrai to Chirasa Chokal on Evestaker, Bangisti Bichai, Mr. Ras Ridella. Rasu in Sayalo so in Sayamakam, Limdimanora Lebat, Arbito Adruma Ocalebat, Gazihansar, Arbito Adrum, Little Chum, Agar Ochalu, Lemisale, Dona Rochalu, Enjo Ochalu, Balahab to Chumalu, Yahulu, Catafatana, Hizuna, Mangisti Canajito, Catasara, Rahab. The recent high level of economic growth in many African countries in revitalizing a new momentum, this is why FAO and African Union are convinced that hunger can be eradicated by 2025. The African Union holds its 23rd ordinary session of the Assembly in Malabo, Equatorial Guinea, under the theme transforming Africa's agriculture for shared prosperity and improved livelihoods through harnessing opportunities for inclusive growth and sustainable development. Hence, African Union and FAO urge all stakeholders and partners to join hands to end hunger from the continent by creating new opportunities for the youth and by promoting family farming as the predominant form of agriculture. Mm -hmm.